Hi everybody, Ms. Mary back again with Virtual Storytime from Midpoint Libraries. Are you ready? All right. If you're ready for a story, wave hello. If you're ready for a story, wave hello. If you're ready for a story and you want us all to know, if you're ready for a story, wave hello. There's a second verse. If you're ready for a story, make octopus tentacles. If you're ready for a story, make like an octopus. If you're ready for a story and you want us all to know, if you're ready for a story, make your hands like an octopus. I guess I made that up on the spot. Hey, everybody. I am so excited to have story time with you today because you know what? We are in the first full week of Oceans of Possibilities. It's our summer theme. It's written on my shirt. It's awesome. So each week during this summer, we're going to focus on, well, we're going to have a theme. Sometimes it's a, a particular ocean animal. Sometimes it's something else to do with oceans. But today, it's all about the octopus. Do you remember how many arms an octopus has? Well, let's make our octopus again. There are, oh, I don't think I can do it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight tentacles on an octopus. Pretty cool, huh? All right, so the first book that I have for us today is called <clears throat> Milo is Missing Something. And this one was written and illustrated for us by Vern Kowski. This comes to us from Random House. <clears throat> Milo is missing something. Milo hatches, then yawns and stretches and opens his curious eyes. The ocean world is strange and new. Look at all those different kinds of fish. The coral reefs, so colorful. Oh, that's pretty. The deep sea caves are dark and cozy. Do you see this kind of fish here? Isn't that interesting? This fish has, um, you know, the pieces that come up on top like, like a fin, right? And then it also has this other piece that hangs down in front that lights up. Isn't that goofy? We'll learn more about those later this summer, but I just wanted to point that one out. So the deep sea caves are dark and cozy. So what is Milo missing? Milo rides the swift sea currents. He plays hide and seek with some hungry friends. He finds sunken treasure in an old shipwreck. Is that a crown? Now, what could Milo be missing? Do you see this kind of animal here? That's called a seahorse. Oh, what fun, what fun! Milo is learning how to walk. Did you know that octopuses can kind of walk on the sand a little bit? Yep. <gasps> to the tide pools, he goes exploring. The water here is warm and calm. Yet, there's something still that's missing. Look at the crabs. They look like they're having fun jumping on all the rocks. Milo makes a friend down deep. Do you know what that one is? That's a jellyfish. Oh, and look, he's made one more. The ocean is filled with friendly fish, but that's not the thing that's missing. Milo searches from shore to shore, from the surface to the inky bottom. Okay, now this is silly. But we see Milo, it looks like he is in somebody's potty. <clears throat> Isn't that funny? That doesn't happen in real life. This is a made-up story, but I think it's kind of funny. 
Look, he's got toilet paper in one hand and a plunger in the other. <laughs> anyway, Milo searches from shore to shore, from the surface to the inky bottom. He knows that it's out there, but he knows not where, the thing that must be missing. And you know what I was thinking the first time I read this book? I wanted to check and make sure that, octop that um, Milo wasn't missing an important part of being an octopus. So let's count his, uh, his tentacles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, that would be important if he were missing a tentacle, but he has all eight. <sighs> Milo dreams that he's found what he's been searching for, the thing that he's sure he is missing. What do you notice in these pictures that we haven't seen before? Well, for one thing, it's all black and white and gray, right? Because I guess that's how Milo dreams. But also, do you see all those octopuses? There are a lot. Milo wakes up and he's alone no more. His family has found him on the ocean floor. At last he knows what he's been searching for and nothing more is missing. That was Milo is missing something. I like that one, that's pretty cool. Milo looks pretty cool, I like his yellow and black stripes. I have a song for you about fish. It's a new one. <clears throat> well, it's new to me anyway. Are you ready? I can imagine this is a fish. You ready? Slippery fish, slippery fish, swimming in the water. Slippery fish, slippery fish, jump, jump, jump! Oh no! She's been eaten by a tuna fish, tuna fish. Flashing in the water. Tuna fish, tuna fish. Chomp, chomp, chomp! Oh no. He's been eaten by an octopus. Octopus. Wiggling in the water. Octopus, octopus. Chomp, chomp, chomp! Oh no, she's been eaten by a great white shark. Great white shark lurking in the water. Great white shark, great white shark. Chomp, chomp, chomp! Oh no! He's been eaten by a humongous whale, humongous whale, spouting in the water. Humongous whale, humongous whale. Oh! Excuse me. Isn't that silly? Oh, I love that one. Because, you know, you have to use your imagination and think about all the possibilities of what's in the ocean. <laughs> all right. So I have another story for us about octopuses. This one is called Octopuses 1 to 10. And before we go any farther, I want to point out some people will say octopi when they mean more than one. And some people say octopuses. And they're both okay. Um, octopuses is more correct. But if you say octopi, I'm not going to have an issue with that. So this one is called Octopuses 1 to 10. It was written for us by Ellen Jackson and uh, pictures by Robin Page. And this one came to us from Beach Lane Books. <clears throat> Octopuses like to hide. One is safe and snug inside. It's inside of a bottle, isn't it? Sometimes octopuses will make their own little house inside of a bottle or something like that. They're pretty squishy animals. They can fit into all kinds of places. Octopuses on patrol use two legs to take a stroll. So octopuses have eight tentacles or eight arms, 
But here's the thing. Two of those arms t seem to act more like legs. They all mostly look alike, but two of them work a little more on moving the octopus around. Yep. So um, they kind of push off with those when they start swimming. Here's an octo oddity. Count each heart. There's one, two, three. You have one heart inside your chest. I have one heart inside my chest. All of us have one heart inside of our chest. But the octopus has three. Kind of crazy, huh? So, um, oh, and their blood. You know how if you get a cut and you bleed, it's, it's red? Well, for an octopus, it's kind of bluish green. Isn't that interesting? Okay. And if an arm gets chopped off, an octopus can regrow it. I can't do that. You probably can't do that, but an octopus can. Yep. Octopuses in disguise, they have four ways to fool your eyes. So here's the thing. Seals and sharks and dolphins and whales, they like to eat octopus for lunch. Mm -hmm. So octopuses have some pretty tricky ways to try to avoid being eaten. Sorry, I just kicked the camera, y'all. <clears throat> we had an earthquake. So, okay, one, if an octopus is threatened, it can squirt out a cloud of ink. Mm -hmm. So then you can't see it and it can swim away because you can't see where it's going, all right? Or an octopus can change colors. Mm -hmm. So um, it can change its colors to match where it is so that the animal that wants to eat it can't find it. We already talked about if an octopus, if it loses an arm, it can grow one, on, it can grow one back. And the octopus, remember how I said they're really bendy? It can like slide into a little cave or someplace to hide. Because an octopus doesn't have a skeleton. You have a skeleton, right, with bones? Octopus doesn't have that. All right, short and happy, that's their lot. Five years are the most they've got. I didn't know that till I read this book either. A giant Pacific octopus lives for about five years. Okay, some octopuses live even less than that. But when, um, when a mama octopus makes uh, the octopus eggs, there are some 100 to 500,000 eggs. They don't all live. They don't all make it to be grown-ups, but that's pretty cool, huh? Boy, if I were an octopus, I would be really old. Okay, six strong arms to help them grab shrimp and lobster or fish or crab. Remember we talked about of the eight tentacles, two of them act like uh, legs, so the other two act like arms. Mm -hmm. They wander where they please, swimming through the seven seas. Did you know that octopuses can be found all over the world? Different kinds in different places, but yes, all over the whole world. Mm -hmm. Celebrate and give a cheer on October 8 each year. Did you know that October 8th is Octopus Day? It's true. Did you notice that October and octopus have the same sound at the beginning? And that sound, octo, means eight, right? Eight arms, so October 8th. Lots of eights in there. Okay, let's keep going. Octopuses, they're so fine. You have one brain. They have nine. I know, octopuses are pretty amazing, aren't they? Maybe that's why they seem so smart. So each octopus arm or tentacle has its own brain plus the main brain that gives the commands to others. Isn't that interesting? Octopuses can open a jar to get to a crab that's inside of it. Mm -hmm. Or they can collect small things and pile them up. Here are 10 that you might meet, all with arms and none with feet. So these are the different kinds of octopus. The giant Pacific octopus, that's the kind we've been looking at through most of this book. Mm -hmm. And um, it's the biggest one. And they can actually recognize individual people. Isn't that cool? Like when you come into the library and I recognize you, an octopus could do that too. I guess I'm as smart as an octopus. Anyway, um, 
And in these pictures here, you'll see a drawing of the octopus next to a person to give you an idea of how big it is. Okay. Um, and this is the seven-arm octopus. One of, its octop one of its tentacles is very small and kind of hidden. The blanket octopus, because instead of having tentacles that are spread out like that, it has webbing between them, kind of like a duck's foot. You know how a duck's toes are all? Anyway, oh, they're all connected. That's how that octopus is. The common octopus, it's common. We see it around. It goes, when I stand up, it's about, um, it's probably about as tall as you are. Mm -hmm. The mimic octopus, look at how small its body is compared to all of its tentacles. It's probably smaller than you are. The Dumbo octopus, it's about as big as my hand. Mm -hmm. The blue ringed octopus, isn't that pretty? It's also about as big as my hand. I like that. That one uh, lives mostly in Australia. And um, it's really poisonous, so we're not going to play with that one. The larger Pacific striped octopus, again, about as big as, your, as a grown-up's hand. It's got a stripy head and a speckled body. The veined octopus, as big as your hand. It's got lots of, um, like lines on it like that. And octopus wolfy, get this, it's about as big as a grown-up's thumb. Can you imagine an octopus that big? I wonder what it feels like if it hugs your thumb. That might feel kind of neat. Anyway, octopuses near and far, each an eight-armed superstar. And then in the back of this book, there are some crafts if you want to make your own octopus. So I thought that maybe we could talk about an octopus craft that you might want to make. It's a drawing. So here's what I'm going to suggest you do. Get a piece of paper and trace your hand, but not your thumb. Okay? So trace it like this on the paper. And then move your hand another way so that when you're done tracing, it looks kind of like that. See? And then you've got an octopus and you can draw a face on it. And you know what? If you take that picture to the library when you go in with your um, uh, Odyssey adventure log, we would love to see those pictures. Oh, love it when you guys show us our crafts. So you know what? You know what just happened there? You read two books with me. So one, two. And um, you watched a virtual story time, so you can mark off another one. So right there, boom, right now, you just did three, three activities. And I'm pretty sure that if you're watching this, you're probably subscribed to our YouTube channel. There's another one. We just knocked off four things. If this um, Adventure Odyssey map is new to you and you're not quite sure what I'm talking about, go and watch last week's story time where I explain how it all works. Remember, after you get to 10 items, after you've marked off 10 activities, you can come in and visit the treasure chest and choose something from there. All right. Well, I want to thank you all so much for sharing stories and songs with me again today. Next week, we're going to talk about dolphins. All right. See you later, alligator. After a while, crocodile. Give a hug, ladybug. Blow a kiss, jellyfish. See you soon, big baboon, out the door, dinosaur. Take care, polar bear, wave goodbye, butterfly. Bye-bye, everybody.